Hello, welcome to another episode of Garden to Garnish. As promised, in this episode, we are going to be covering all the veg patch basics that you need. Maybe you're starting a veg patch um, in all these weird times that we're living in at the moment. I started this time last year. I'm going to show you all the basics that you really need to know. All of us, all of us is you and me and they all of us cross rivers and streams, eat green beans, tangerines. Before we go into how to start a veg patch, I thought we would check in to see how my seeds are doing. These are the seeds we sowed in my first video, and there's a link in the top right for that video if you want to know the basics. Tomatoes are doing really well. I wasn't sure how long they would take to pop up, so that's been about seven days, so that's brilliant. We've got some other signs of life here but need to be patient sweet peas are coming through which is really exciting i thought i'd also show you some seeds i sowed about two weeks ago um, these are sprouts so um, hopefully they will be delicious in time for the autumn and here we've got some parsnips and some annuals and annuals are basically flowers that just flower for one year um, and then they die but they are beautiful uh, when they are with us right let's go out to the veg patch so your veg patch basics. The first thing you need to decide on is where you're going to grow your veg. The key thing is you need it big enough so you can grow all the delicious things that you want to have, but small enough so that it's compact and it fits in your garden. I don't have a particularly big garden. This is a new build house. So this size is perfect. For reference, this one is about two and a half meters by two meters. So it's really compact and really manageable. We built a raised bed. And the reason why we went for a raised bed is because it's it keeps it tidy. So the wood around the edges basically keeps it all contained. The other thing is, is um, the, the soil is warmer. So because it's off the ground and you can um, improve the soil, I'll come on to that in a minute, it's warmer for the plants and therefore you can plant it out sooner. So the actual process was lift the turf, dig it up, build the frame, and then we spent a weekend with a pickaxe getting at our clay soil. It was really claggy and heavy. We removed the stones and then really importantly, we really focused on the soil. Soil is the most important thing. I cannot stress it enough. Your soil is the key to your garden success, to your veg patches success. And we spent a whole weekend improving the soil and getting it set up. And the way we did that was we put um, about four or five big bags worth of organic matter, peat free, really important. And then we added topsoil. And what that, what that does is it gives the ground all the nutrients that it needs to be able to give the veg the ability to grow. So it's really critical. So I've had a few questions from people about um, plants dying in gardens and the honest answer is it's probably because of your soil. So you need to improve it. You need to improve it every autumn and every spring. It's the most important thing. And the way you do that is mulching. So here is what mulching is. It's basically where you are covering your borders or your veg patch with organic matter, peat free. And that might be manure. You can get it in bags from your garden center and you cover with a thick layer all around your plants. And as I've done on my veg patch, the whole surface. And the reason why that is critical is because it's adding loads of new nutrients to your soil and it's also preventing water from evaporating. So it keeps all the goodness in there for your plants. Uh, and it also means that it keeps weeds away. And this is the perfect time of year to mulch. Now then, getting your veg patch up and running. This is the bit you've all been waiting for. My biggest advice on this is don't plant out too early. This is a mistake I made last year. I was so keen, I was so enthusiastic. I planted loads of things out and they died because it's too cold still at night. We're in March still. April is also gonna be probably colder in the evenings too. So the time to plant out in your veg patch is May. Your seeds, you're hopefully sowing inside and they are living on the windowsill because it's warm and they get the sunlight and then you'll be watering those a couple of times a day at least. 
Then in April, if your seedlings are strong enough, you would put them into the cold frame. Your cold frame is your halfway house between your house and the veg patch. So the key is don't put anything in your veg patch yet. When it's young, it's really vulnerable to the cold and so you'll be, you'll be spoiling it basically. Then when it's May, I will show you how to plant out into your veg patch. There are a couple of things you might want to think about, a little bit of homework if you like, and that is invest in a cloche because a cloche is also a really good way of protecting your plants when you first plant them out. Ben and I made these cloches. It was really simple. We had some corrugated plastic hanging around. We made the cold frame as well. Um, and it's just with a bit of wood, really simple to do. Now this is a really stupidly basic thing, but trust me, I made this mistake last year. Plant and grow things that you actually want to eat. I, um, I grew a load of things that I would never eat. So I had loads of radishes last year and I realized I don't, eat, I don't eat them. The other thing to note is that not everything needs a veg patch to grow. So last year I put tomatoes in my veg patch. Well this year I absolutely will not be making that mistake. It got unwieldy, it was huge and I realised that actually tomatoes are better in pots. And you might have a really small garden, you might have a balcony, well then tomatoes in a pot is a really simple thing that you could grow. There's so many other things you can grow if you don't have a veg patch or alongside a veg patch. In containers like these, you can grow little gem lettuce, for example. Another thing that's perfect for containers and therefore for balconies is strawberries. But for now, the big focus for you needs to be your seeds and your seedlings and all of that is indoors. Thank you for watching. Coming up on the channel, the things you've got to look forward to are how to plant out in containers, which is perfect if you've got a small space herb gardens showing you all the basics and I'll be planting out summer bulbs for summer colour. All of, us, all of us is you and me and they and them and he and she. All of us, all of us cross rivers and streams, eat green beans, tangerines.